Chuck, you start. I am Chuck Jones. I play bass in Dope Pod. I'm Eli Winderman. I play keyboards in Dope Pod. I'm Rob Kampa. I play guitar in Dope Pod. And there is a fourth Neil, but he was unable to make it to the interview, so he plays drums. He's here in spirit. Yeah. That guy's got to be so hot. Oh my God. Takes balls. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it looks like the jacket from uh, your jacket is your now jacket dry. Your jacket is now dry. <laughs> Champion. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, we were actually watching a documentary about that word jam band. It's like, hey Chris, that's such a turnoff for some people. We were watching this this jazz documentary, which which is someone they started talking about. Uh, There's icons among us. Yeah. Really yeah, cool documentary really cool about movie. jazz. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said it as a joke. Yeah. It's like. Everybody in that movie, like, you, there's a lot of people in it that, like, you know, jam band at this point is kind of like a curse word yeah. for bands. It's not like, we're not jam no. no, we but improvise it, a lot we, we're, we play, you know, improvisation music. And it's true, you know, like, jam band is kind of like a bad connotation because it can mean that you're just, you know, a noodly, like, don't really know what you're doing with the music kind of thing or like you don't feel it or, I don't know I I think jam band though it should really it's not like a genre it's just like a subculture that no matter what kind of music you play it's like hip-hop could be a jam band yeah. it's like you improvise like right now there's like hip-hop at it's like it was all for like people with you know people that go to this festival and it's hip-hop yeah. But now, right now, this is a jam band because it's at a jam band. Well, this isn't even a jam band festival. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's so. funny to me because um, I like the term jam band because it's so, you know, what do you sound like? We're a jam band. If it were okay to say that, I would love to say that because I hate describing what we do for like 10 minutes straight. Just that so you don't have to say that word. Yeah. yeah. It's just the thing is like if you say it's that, like people, froggy, people have yeah. an assumption built in their head of what that means. Yeah. Of, which. You can just watch Which this might not be entirely like, positive. To me, like I grew up with jam bands, so when I hear the term jam band, I'm like, yeah, I like jam bands. Hell yeah. If somebody could say that to me and I'd be down. I would check it out. But you know? I also don't like a lot of jam bands. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. I guess if I had to like describe my music, or our, not my music, if I had to describe our music to someone that, like, if I said the word jam band, they'd be like, no, nah, like, yeah. that. I'd be like, it's like, for, Progressive, like rock with like electronic funk. Yeah. Or like even like that if, we if, if we were if we were improvisational uh, progressive rock. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's yeah, kind of fun. Yeah. If we were if we were a sick country band, and someone's like, "What do you sound like?" Like we're country. They might think we sound like super pop produced yeah. modern country, which like, which I personally don't like at all. But we could be like something totally slamming, like that sounds like Duke Levine or Jim Campolongo. You could be or, like, Green Sky Bluegrass. Yeah, like the down. nastiest yeah. bluegrass yeah. country, but yeah. people would have an assumption that it would be like pop country. So I feel like with any genre, I bet we're not the only ones who encounter that. I bet right, in every right. genre, like there's some sort of like stigma that goes with it. Yeah. You know? And this happens to be ours. <laughs> so that is the analogy of how we would describe our music. If that made any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we play so many shows, it's hard to like put on the spot for like memorable things. Fish after parties were awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, did, we did two um, fish after parties. One last weekend in Saratoga Springs on the third after the third night at uh, SPAC, which went really well. And then we did another one a month or so ago in Western Massachusetts at the Lucky Dog Music Hall. And that one, that one was great. I mean, personally, I, that, I think that's been, that was my favorite show of the year so far. Just uh, music-wise, I thought we were all listening really well, and everything felt very comfortable. And all the uh, it was just a very um, that's how I would like sets to be. Was that one? I was really happy with that one. I concur. Yes. <laughs> it, it was cool because uh, the show sold out like way before it started kind of thing so you know like, like we knew it was going to be like a packed house so that, that's always a cool uh, motivator it's a cool motivator for sure. yeah it was it was super hot in there so there was a they had this weird fire door in the middle of the stage that you can't walk but they told us in the set if it got too hot we could open it 
So like, you know, halfway into the set, our drummer opened the door to get some fresh air in there. And <laughs> three-fourths of the way into the set, we just looked down at this guy, just like crawling across the middle of the stage, like trying to get into this venue. And Neil looks at him, he's like, no, you can't do that. This guy's like, it's cool. And just <laughs> crawling to the middle of the floor. Yeah. Trying to get in. Very smelly crowd that night. <laughs> yeah, they were a little stinky. We hey, were a smelly two. band that night too, it's so it's true. okay. It's a sweaty, sweaty room. Yeah, which is the best kind, I think. Do you guys play a lot of sweaty rooms? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. I like, it actually I like feels, when it gets sweaty. It feels weirder when it's like an air-conditioned, comfortable room. I, yeah. I feel like I'm. Uh, I feel like I'm like take, should be taking my SATs or something when it's really cold in there. Yeah. You know, like doing something really diligent, and not, you know rocking out or whatever. Yeah. So I like it when it's hot. Makes you play with a sense of urgency, I suppose. Ah, uh, man. Bear Creek is just by far the best festival there is because it's just all the music there is like my favorite kind of music and like all the bands are all top notch. That was one of the first ones for us where I really felt like we were starting to like enter this new realm, you know. We, like, it's like we were on you know, the bottom of the totem pole. Maybe not like the total bottom, but we were like, it's all like, all of my really good friends and all of like, the people that I look up to musically. Yeah. So just like, the the bar was raised for, for, for that. And like also, you know, it's the most beautiful property. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I love, I love that festival. Apparently the grounds just got flooded really bad. Yeah. 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 Huge. It was a hurricane. Something. Yeah. yeah. Huge flood. Yeah. yeah. So they, uh, I think they're doing uh, a benefit festival for it. Uh, soon for that yeah. flood, flood jam or something. So. Who were some of the bands that you guys were saying that you like to see there and that you look up to? Uh, Desky yeah. Martin would definitely. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that that band single-handedly changed just my direction musically in which I wanted to go. And I was Eli and I were talking about it. It's um, we all went to Berkeley College of Music, and Eli and I went to a, a five-week summer program. And then we didn't see each other for a couple years. And then I, I I started listening to that band, and I was like, you know what? I want to start like. A, an organ trio sort of thing, like exactly like Badescu Barn and Wood. So I was walking around with a flyer looking for an organist and I ran into Eli again. I was like, oh, Eli, like, what's up, man? I hadn't seen him in a couple years. And I was holding a flyer. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just looking for an organ player. I was like, oh, I, I play organ. It's like, cool, it's jam. Yeah. And then here we are. Yeah. So. Now, another think, favorite for me at that one was, uh, which goes hand in hand with the Badescu Barn and Wood thing, was seeing John Schofield. And I've seen him before and it's, I mean, he's one of my favorites by a long shot, but. It felt really cool to be like at the side of the stage, like right next to John Schofield's amp, just like yeah. you, know, you could feel like the air being pushed at you from the back of one of your favorite guitar players' amps. Like I wasn't even hearing him out of the PA, you know. Yeah. And that was a pretty, pretty special moment for me, you know. That was that was super cool. Yeah, I think like to just see someone that's like at his age, like always improving and staying super humble like yeah. at, at his age like that's that's like something that I definitely want with my life like what he has you know like he's just doing it for the music he's the best improviser I, I think he's the best improviser there is for that kind of music He's definitely a personal favorite of all of ours. So that was super cool. That combined with the fact that he was playing with Badesky, Martin, and Wood was just a, a, a... You can't beat that. That's like two of our favorites put together. Yeah. And that was just wild. And then, you know, Lettuce and Soul Live, Dumpster Funk, and... Uh, Humphreys played there last year. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, two oh, yeah. years ago. That, I love that band, too. It's just... It's the, Best. And they, they treat artists with so much respect. I, I, I really admire that. It's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, you just kind of. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, th I think a lot of the times, like when we write music, it's just like starting with you know, the groove, and the bass. And, you know, I always want to have like a some strong melodic 
content in the music. So that's important. And then once you have, you know, some good bass and a good groove and, and you know, a strong that's melody, strong then melody. you can add other things around it to, you know, even it up a little bit. Make it a little, throw a couple curveballs in it, you know? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of it comes from, from Eli. He does he gets a lot of song ideas and structures together on his computer and we'll bring it in and then we'll arrange it. You know, sometimes we hear these songs and we don't really know how it's gonna I mean, how it's gonna go over. I think the first time that really happened was uh, with one of our older songs now, French Bowling. But when he first showed that to us, we're all like Is this gonna work? Yeah, like, like what <laughs> this doesn't sound like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this doesn't like, sound why like why not? This does not sound like a song or something, yeah. but now that turned into one of you know everyone's favorite yeah. songs. And just making sure that you put energy into it, you know, like play it, play it with your heart, no matter what, how, no matter what kind of music it is, soft or loud. You got to make sure that you're completely behind it and giving it a hundred percent of your soul. Otherwise, people might not be able to tell that's what's going on if they're not enjoying it. But I mean, if you're giving it your all, they'll. They'll receive it if they're if they're ready for it, or they'll just be too fucked up and have no idea what's going on. Um, I heard somebody call this a hippie festival. What would you have to say to that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is definitely more like the uh, gathering of the juggalos. Yeah, yeah it's festival. more like <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Yeah. But it's down to that because if somebody festival. told me it was a hippie festival. This is what I would picture in my head. So it would be entirely correct to me. Yeah, I mean, if you like were deaf and you like looked at the crowd, it could be any, it could be fish playing, it could be dead playing, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. but it's it not, it's concert, like you know? all yeah. electronic music now. It's like a rave. This is a rave. Actually, I, someone, my friend pointed this out last night. He said like on the flyer, it doesn't say 11th, it says 11th annual party. It doesn't say 11th annual music festival anymore. Which is cool, it's what it is, it's a party more than a music festival, yeah. which is fine, like, it's, fuck yeah, it's a party, it's sweet. Do you, you think know? that's why festivals like Bear Creek and the smaller ones, like... That's a music festival, that's like, you can see music that won't necessarily draw the masses, but it's like, so groundbreaking that it doesn't what you, even matter. What know? are you talking about specifically right now? Bear Creek, like, yeah, yeah. Lonnie Smith isn't gonna draw, like, 10,000 10, hippies, yeah. but like the fact that he's at Bear Creek playing the music that changed the world back in 1960, whatever, 1967, whenever <laughs> he started, like that's a music festival. It's like going into a, a uh, museum. You're like, now Dr. Lonnie Smith will be playing. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not Take like, notes. like this is really popular right now because there's like all this money behind it. So like. <laughs> like, okay, like, are you on drugs? You like it? Okay, cool. Yeah. What a, sorry. Oh, I was, I was going to chime in that Rob and I were talking about this last night too, that this is kind of more of like a sound festival than a music festival, where it's not really about, I mean, I, this can be argued, but to me it's not necessarily about playing so much a lot of the times, as it is like, a lot of these people are just amazing at creating sounds and like, you know, it's like listen to the, listen to the sound that's going on right now. A live band cannot sound like this because those are electronic drums. You know, it's, that bass coming out is like can't really make it sound exactly like that. It's so so me metronomic and to a clock. That yeah. This is much more about about sound than it is, you know, actual. This sounds like it's really cocky or coming out of the wrong, but musicality maybe the word I'm looking for, but I mean, there's lots of great players, but it's not, you're not going out to see someone like shred over changes or whatever. You're going out to see them make big bass noises and huge drum sounds, which is great. I love it. You know? Yeah. But it's, it's a different thing. Yeah, it came out the wrong way. There's, I'm, I'm not saying that there's, there's not, there's amazing musicality in this, you know, like the production that goes into some of yeah, the songs. Yeah, that's the thing. thing. Like, if it was like, Bass Nectar, like on, on stage, I love Bass Nectar by the way, but like if it was Bass Nectar like making a beat in front of all these people, I'd be fucking super down. They'd <laughs> yeah. be like, alright, Bass Nectar, like, he starts out just like, doo, 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 doo. and then so he's like, alright, now I can put them, like, I would, I'd rather watch that. Yeah. Like, I love, but I'm, I'm super down to watch it tonight with what it is at the end of the process, but, you know, 
the producing element is the. See, I don't really know that much about DJing though. Like, you know, they they do stuff where they change it up every night, you know. But uh, it's just it's different than what we're doing. Yeah. I think that sometimes we really live bands can get thrown into the DJ category. You know, we get we get placed next to these bands that just they have computers and DJs on stage. It's just we're not going to sound like that. We don't have a, there's elements of it, but it's just it's a different it's a different thing that's getting shot at your ears than if we're playing live music. I guess no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know, man. Fuck it, dude. No, I, do I'm just like personally that would feel a little weird song that. I, I sort of missed all this because all I can hear are the subs over there. <laughs> right? It's loud, it's, it's really loud. It's awesome. But were you Shakes saying that out. we should get shirts that say motherfucking dopapod? Yeah. That's kinda like how Zugma has stickers that just say what the That's fuck what is Zugma? That's what we've been talking about. Okay. <laughs> I'm deaf. Sorry. <laughs>